All right, let's see. What are the true boundaries and expectations between men and women when it comes to communication, congregation in Juma and or in casual conversation, for example, right now we're all mixed, sitting together. In some masjids, there's a wall between male and female, and some places we can't even eat together. What's the truth? Um, for the author of the question, have you read Sai Bukhari lately? I think you'll find a, a lot of enlightenment there. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, ate with women from the same pens as women <coughs> who he was not related to. Um, I can't say I like our sitting arrangement. I'm not comfortable with it. And yet at the same time, um, you know, everyone is behaving in the right way, so I can't really get too upset. I just, I do believe that we should maintain some separation. Um, was there a wall or a curtain in the Prophet's mosque? Was there? Okay, what is the word that's used to describe something that comes into existence after the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Beda. Okay, well, I think that question has been answered. See, most people actually know the truth, but sometimes they think that some bidda is good and some is bad. Any innovation, any deviation serves only to weaken Iman. It only serves to weaken Islam. Never settle for any kind of deviation because there's no such thing as a good deviation. Um, we still have a whole bunch of questions here. No more? We're finished? He says it's over. Two minutes more. Okay. Two minutes? Okay, I'll give it to, to her then. Now quickly about the seating arrangement. I just ask myself sometimes, when we are on a bus or we are in public transportation, don't we sit next to each other? No. And well, we do. I don't. We, well, what happens, you can't guarantee that there is a space every time. But what is happening there is that Allah is always with you. And you are, I mean, I travel all the time, flying most of the time, half of my time, actually, uh, from one place to the other. And it happens that sometimes people don't think about this. They don't say, please let her sit next to a female because they can't control that anyway. So I wind up sitting next to a man. Is that haram now? Do I jump from the airplane? Do I not take the flight? Do I not go make dawah? Or what do I do exactly? I just sit there and read Quran. That's all I do. That's all I want to do. But not in a scared way, in a more secure way. Because we know that we're going to do something for Sabilillah. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. So as long as everybody knows what they're doing, you know, and... Believe me, that makes a stronger Muslim. That makes a stronger Muslim. Now, there is a question here. Various times uh, you said that um, there are hadiths for a specific time in a specific context. And the end of this is, what about a woman that cannot be emir? And I did refer to that. I said she cannot be imam, she cannot be emir, simply because there are certain duties and obligations related to that. And that is conducting prayer all the time. And she cannot be that because you know why. She's not like the man in that. Or do you need me to answer that for you? <laughs> There's one other question. Um, whoever wrote that question, they can come and discuss it with me. And OK, you can come and discuss it with me. And please, please buy the book. I don't want to go back to California with a heavy bag. <laughs>